Hi! We're here! <laughs> this is great. This is great. <laughs> don't leave. Don't leave. Don't We're leave here. Tracy to do this stuff. <laughs> this is great. This is great. Oh, wait. <laughs> wait a minute. Don't. 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 Leave. Don't be crazy to do this stuff. No, no, no. <laughs> okay, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully. Um, oh shoot, I don't know if I should be leaving that play. Do I? Oh no, that's like in the background. So I always put it on. So I don't need to. I can. I can just exit out of my YouTube. Yes. Yes. Please. You sure? Yes. I'm. Okay, but then, how would you? How would I see the comments? Oh, right, right. That's right, right. But you have to put it on mute. You have, like, I okay. usually- I don't know where mute is on YouTube. <laughs> oh, wait, yes, I do. Here. <laughs> Good, okay, great. Okay, let's see if we're in commission. She's probably, hold on. <laughs> wow, okay, all, why are all my girls messaging me? Well, welcome. Well, wait, I probably should go back and make sure people can hear us. Oh, yeah. I want to watch on Zoom. So, oh my gosh. Can you, can everyone hear us? Can someone confirm if they can hear us, please? Hello, hi. Can you, can someone please say, yes, I hear you, Tracy. <laughs> Yay, thank you. And I'm assuming, can you hear Lena Marie? And you <laughs> hear me as well. <laughs> perfect, perfect, <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Okay, so Lena Marie, do you, do you, what do you watch so that you can see the comment section? Uh, so I do it on my phone. Oh. And so, okay. yeah, and then I put That's my okay, that's back. okay. I can see you and I can see the comment section. Okay, so. Great. Welcome everyone. Sorry that this is taking a little bit of time to get started. I don't usually do this, but um, usually my business manager Haley does, but she said, you got this. Yeah, right. <laughs> but we're here and thank you for joining us for Wine Wednesday. I hope you brought whatever your beverage of choice is. This is actually a wine spritzer. I decided to go with something a little lighter. I don't have a bottle of wine open and I didn't want to open one because knowing me, I could end up polishing it off. But I, I want to thank all of you for being here. I also want to welcome Hensel Coaching and Consulting Dating and Relationship Coach, Lena Marie Gilbert, who is here to talk about the six week group coaching program the single girls kit. Lena Marie, will this be your third or fourth time doing the single girls kit? It is my fourth time. So it's been exactly a year. Wonderful. <laughs> and it's been a great success. So Lena Marie decided to bring it back and I'm happy to have it here. And we're going to let Lena Marie talk a little bit more about that and pretty much facilitate our wine Wednesday. The chat box is open. So if you want to mix with each other in there and share, or if you want to leave questions as we go along, feel free to do so. We will try to keep our eye on that. But Lena Marie also has some Wine Wednesday exclusives to share with you tonight that you could take advantage of because this six week group program is coming really soon. It starts this weekend. So I believe these Wine Wednesday exclusives could be some juicy offers that you may want to consider. So Lena Marie, I'll let you take over. Yes, okay, great. Thank you, Tracy. All right, so this is my fourth time uh, doing this and I'm super excited. Also, I meant to say that I'm drinking a red tonight. So cheers. <laughs> All right, so tonight's Wine Wednesday exclusive. So, you know, I love, I love, you know, offering things for people. And so uh, in addition to the six week program, the six weeks classes, you're also going to get a post SGK single girls kit, private one-on-one -on -one dating profile consultation and 
coaching session with myself. And then we also have the Wine Wednesdays exclusive number two, where you could win a free ELI. All right, ELI and debrief session with myself. And we're going to do the drawing this Saturday. So that that's already like a $300, yeah, yeah. $328 value that you're going to get for free. It's a drawing, okay? So, you know, one person gets it, all right? <laughs> but you're, that, that lucky person is going to get that. So I wanted to include that. That's my gift for that lucky individual. But everyone else will get the private one-on-one dating, dating consultation and coaching session with me. So I wanted to offer that to you guys. That's fantastic. Lena Marie, do you want me to share just a little bit briefly about the ELI assessment? Yes, yes. Yeah, please do. yeah so the, the ELI, it's the Energy Leadership Index Assessment. This is a wonderful tool that really gauges kind of your attitude or how you show up in life. And we all show up a certain way when all is going well and we're just going about our day and we're not stressed um, nothing is, has us triggered. Our buttons aren't pushed. We're just plugging along just fine. We all show up a certain way. Often it could be in a more anabolic or maybe a more positive way. But whenever we encounter a stressor, we show up differently. And every one of us is different in how we show up. Some people you can observe or witness that they're stressed because they show up in a way that is easy to read or detect. Other people may show up where they keep it more internalized, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they show up differently. We learn a lot about ourselves and how we show up in this world, how we see ourselves, how we see others, and how we see the world around us. And this assessment helps to identify how you are seeing those three things and what you're putting out to the world. The more you know this about yourself, the more you will understand what you have to offer in a relationship. It'll also help you to understand other people better, not just a person you may be in an intimate relationship with, but people you work with, your family members, your friends. So it's a wonderful tool. I highly recommend it to everyone most of my clients have done the ELI assessment. It comes with a two hour debrief. So Lena Marie is offering a giveaway to one of you, one of you that signs up for the six week group coaching program will be entered in a drawing for a complimentary ELI assessment with Lena Marie in a two hour debrief. And yes, that's a $328 value. So that is really a great offer. Love that you're, you're offering that Lena Marie. Yes. Yes. I, 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 I just, I love the ELI and I love doing it. And I really see the difference in my clients. Um, once they, they do the ELI. Um, and so, with the singer girls kit. So you get all of that. So you get the one-on-one coaching and dating profile consultation. And then the one person gets the ELI. Uh, and then you get six weeks, six weeks uh, of me as your coach. And then a community of the other ladies, their support, uh, all for 427. And yes, it can be split into payments. I've gotten some questions about that. So yes, that can be done. And we're starting, we're doing this on a different day than we've done before. All right. Remember we used to do it on Wednesdays, but now we're going to do it on Saturdays so that more people around the world can experience the single girls kit. Um, so we're starting this Saturday, the 19th, it's 12 PM Eastern. 11 a.m. Central Time, and then if you're in uh, Germany, you know, do, just do the, the time conversion. <laughs> um, so we start this Saturday, and uh, I think our last class is July 24th. And, and then I also got a question about this. So I'm going to address this right now. In the United States, you know, we have July 4th, and one of our classes actually lands on July 3rd during that weekend. And so I want to let you guys know, it's a group 
consensus. All right. If, if everyone's like, Hey, I got, I'm traveling that weekend. Not a problem. Guess what? We'll just switch the day. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I wanted to quickly answer that. Sure. All right. So, and also I wanted to also introduce myself to everyone and then we can get into today's topic. All right. So, so hi everyone. If you don't know me, so I've been talking for the last five minutes, but I am Lena Marie Gilbert. I am a, a Henso coaching and consulting coach, certified coach, uh, where I, I do, I work on, a dating, breakups, anything to do with uh, love and relationships. And a little bit about myself, I spent most of my 20s believing like I have to. Um, I have to be a good girl. I have to be nice. I have to be sweet. I can't be too much. All of these things. And I went from relationship to relationship with men, believing I had to act a certain way in order for someone to like me. Um, it was kind of like imposter syndrome. And that caused me a lot of anxiety. It's, you know, it's unsustainable. I, you know, I'm trying to mold myself into what I thought they wanted. Uh, wondering if they like me, if they thought, and, 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 and then if they liked me, cool. You know, I was okay with that. I was content with that. And then I would just move on because I wasn't really showing up as myself, my vulnerable self. You know, if you're trying to be someone else, then that's what you're doing. You're just trying. You're, and maybe it'll work for a little bit. Maybe it, maybe it won't, <laughs> but, you know, because it's, it's, it's not going to work for too long because you're trying to be someone else. And, and if you want true intimacy, you, you must show up as the real you. And the number one thing that helped me out of that cycle was first acknowledging that these patterns were holding me back. Um, and that I was afraid. I was afraid. I, you know, uh, I know Tracy you talk a lot about the gremlin, mm -hmm. right? It's fear. It was fear. You're gremlin. And you'll learn a lot about the gremlin in the Singer Girls Kit and how to talk to it. Uh, I think we go over it in weeks three and four. So I stopped ignoring it. I stopped ignoring that, that feeling. I embraced it. I embraced the gremlin because I wanted to understand it. And, and really, because really it was standing in my way. And that's actually the first step in the SGK framework, understanding and exploring your, your blocks right? Your inner blocks and the patterns that might be getting in your way, the cycle. And when you do this work, you start to have a, a deeper and more authentic relationship with yourself. And, and I guarantee, I guarantee you will start to show up more confidently at work, in your love life, with your friends, because your energy will just vibrate higher. Okay. So that brings us to our topic why it's super important to be clear on what you want and what you need in your love life, your, your negotiables and your non-negotiables. Because when you're clear and intentional with who you are, your standards, believing that you deserve it, you will naturally vibrate this energy and you'll attract someone that matches that. I think it's all, it all goes down to energy, energy, like energy attracts like energy. It's not magic and it's not luck. What do you think? Well, it, the thing is, is if you're coming from a uncertain place about yourself, mm -hmm. so let's say you're coming from an insecure place, but yet you desire a strong, confident man, mm -hmm. you'll be lucky to find that. And if you do, you're not going to hang on to him because he's going to see right through your insecurities. It's not uncommon for people to go in dating somewhat blind because they just really don't know themselves. We all have areas of weakness and we have areas of strength. It's getting comfortable with those. 
Lena Marie brought up the gremlin. Yeah, the gremlin just wants to protect you. The gremlin's not there to hurt you. The gremlin wants to protect you. Stay safe, play small, I'll protect you. We don't want to get uncomfortable, right? Mm -hmm. And that's where that fear comes in. But you do have to know you and you have to be very clear and certain about what you bring to the world so that you know what you bring to the table in a relationship because then you won't settle for anything other than what someone else can bring to the table that matches you as well. Mm -hmm. If you've ever felt like he's not a match, check yourself, check yourself too, and make sure you really know what you're looking for, but also what you have to bring to the table. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And I, I always talk about owning what you bring to the table. I mean, I get that question a lot as well. What does it mean to own what you bring to the table? And that's really just, that's your authenticity. That's, that's what, what makes you unique. Those are your gifts. And if you're unsure of what that is, that's okay too. That's what the single girls kid is for <laughs> to, to help you to, cause you it's in you, but it's really about embracing it and helping you bring it, bring it out. So, so, okay. So we, we have here, what does a universal red flag, which might be a non negotiable and then the green flag, which could be a, a negotiable, look like. And I like to talk a lot about not just red flags, but I also like to talk about green flags. So think of it as like a traffic, like when you're driving like a traffic light. So what does green means, right? Green means it's safe to go, it's safe to drive. Yellow means, okay, maybe I should just start slowing down a little. <laughs> And then red, red means, uh, probably should stop, right? <laughs> you might hit another car, stop. And so that's what, what we work on in Single Girls Kit in, in week one. It's knowing these because this is your foundation. So for today, we're just going to discuss what a universal. So this might look different for, so what you work on in the Single Girls Kit in week one, we actually get down to the nitty gritty. Like I, we're, we're manifesting this man. So I want you to think of everything, what he looks like, what he smells like. How do you feel when you're around him? That's important. But I thought it would be fun to discuss what are some universal red flags to look out for on, on a date? So I have one here. So they talk down to you. They dismiss your feelings. What do you think, Tracy? Well, do you hear, do you hear a baby in the background? Yes. <laughs> Grand baby. <laughs> but it, I love it. She's getting her diaper changed. But yes, I, I, I agree with that. Also, I and I think that's very important to be crystal clear on so, so where I feel with negotiables and non-negotiables, there's a lot of things you're not going to find on the first date, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's too deep. So mm -hmm. it's really knowing what can I find out about this person on the first date and you go with that strategy. So yeah, if let's say to me, I'm just going to share what would be a red flag. If I were on a first date and all he did was talk about himself, like yeah, I do this. Yeah, I'm this, I'm that. And he's really trying to sell himself. In my mind, he's selling himself down the river because to me, he should be asking about me. Mm -hmm. That's if I'm on a first date, I'm not there to sell myself because I already know who I am. I don't need to sell anything. Okay. I'm going to ask about him because I want to learn about him because in what he's sharing, when I ask questions, I'm going to find out a lot of things that may be a non-negotiable for me. So if family were important, I may ask, tell me about your family. You know, where, do, where does your family live? And do you guys get together often? 
if he starts sharing with me, well, my sister doesn't get along with my mom and this and that, I'm cluing in and I'm already really, really tell me more <laughs> because that may not work for me. So I do think there's a strategy, but yeah, how he treats you, how he's showing up, very important. Right, right. And a lot of this, there, I mean, there's clear signs, like you said, if he's talking about himself, he's not asking you any questions. That's a clear sign on the first date. All right. That I, I, I don't know what his deal is, but I, I'm not going to stay here and try to figure it out. I'm just going to take that information and say, oh, well, yeah, maybe, maybe this isn't a quite a match. And, and whether, and then talking down to you, that's also something is a clear sign that this person, this person is, it, it has other issues that, that goes beyond <laughs> this first date. All right. And what, and how to handle that and how to handle that with confidence. Like we talk all about this in a single girls kit is a whole week devoted to confidence. If this were to happen on the first date, second date, third date, even three months down the line, we work on confidence to walk away from behavior like this. Um, and, and people, and people think confidence is just something other people are just born with, but it's actually just something that you can create. It's a skill. It's a skill, just like any other skill you practice it. Um, and it, in SGK, we work on this in a group as a team. You're not doing this work alone. You got, you have me as your coach, and then you also have the support of the other ladies because it's a community. Um, another sign that might be, and this is, and I don't know if you'll see this in the first date, but what I found is hot and cold behavior. What do you think about that, Tracy? <laughs> Unmuting myself, hot and cold behavior. Mm -hmm. um, well, I know where my mind is going, but now it's been a long time since I've been on the dating scene. So Maybe, maybe clear up for me what you mean by hot and cold behavior. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <I'll> be <happy. laughs> All right. So this, you might not see this in the first date, maybe not even in the first three dates. Um, but one second, he's really into you. Mm -hmm. He's calling you, he's texting you, he's saying all the right things. <laughs> and then, and then you don't hear from him in like a month. And it's like, he's cold. If you reach out to him, he's giving you one word messages. That's a red flag for me. It well, might not show up in the first day. Yeah, I would have moved on. So yeah. there'd be more fish in the sea. <laughs> His loss, <laughs> not mine. But I think it's also understanding that if someone is, if, if you go out on a first date, or maybe you're in the early stages of seeing if this person is going to be a connection or a match for you, if they're not, it doesn't mean that they're bad. And it doesn't, it doesn't mean there's anything wrong with them. And there doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you. Mm -hmm. There's a reason there's someone for us and there's a reason there's not. Mm -hmm. And I look at it like if you were purchasing a home, you're going to go to several homes to look at them to find the home that fits you. And let's say you look at five homes and none of them are a fit, but the sixth one is. Well, there's a reason that sixth home is a fit for you and the other five weren't. It doesn't mean that there's something wrong with those homes. They're for someone. They just weren't for you. Think of yourself also as one of those homes. You're not for everyone and he may not be for everyone. What happens is this dating life drains people. And it sucks the life out of many people, not just women, but men as well, because it's difficult and we analyze ourselves. Mm -hmm. Stop analyzing yourself. You, you have qualities and attributes to bring to the relationship. And if he, if he is hot and then he gets cold, don't read into it that there's something wrong with you. He may not feel a match or a connection with you. And that's okay. Would you want him to stick around if he didn't? No. And you wouldn't want to stick around 
right? What do you have to say about that, Lena Marie? I totally agree. I've been there. I've been there <laughs> so many times and I needed those lessons so that I could really like really work on really work on the things that I was avoiding. Yeah. That's that's how the single girls kit was created because when you're constantly seeing, right, the patterns within yourself or, or really it's, it's within you, right? You feel like you're just attracting all of these bad boys and, and, and insecure people or I, I don't even want to get into the narcissist, which I've been seeing a lot on the internet about. <laughs> um, I wouldn't find out at the beginning, unfortunately. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. At the beginning, because it takes a while to, I mean, mm -hmm. we can all sniff out a narcissist eventually, but you're not going to know that at first. That's mm -hmm. why it's important to really be mm -hmm. into, and, and this, I don't want to get travel off, but that's why I also say, don't jump into the bedroom right away because then you have tunnel vision because you're not getting to know him because now the relationship is physical and you're missing the boat because if he were a narcissist, you're never going to find out until it's too late. You could be married to the person because you were too busy getting it on instead of getting to know him. Right. Right. And we talk about this in week five chemistry versus compatibility. Yeah. That week is all about that. And, and we also work on your intuition, checking in with your intuition and your gut. Sometimes we're afraid to trust our gut because we don't know the outcome or we don't want to know mm -hmm. the outcome. So in the single girls kit, we work on leaning into that and trusting it, trusting ourselves, trusting our intuition and knowing the differences, how to spot where, you know, maybe you're leading with lust and, and chemistry that that's okay. Okay. That's what gets you into the door. Right. Right. And, but, that brings me to my next possible red flag, which is your opposite values, which is the compatibility, which is really the foundation of a healthy relationship. So if you, so red flag would be opposite values. If you and a partner or a potential partner have con contrasting values, you might experience a lot of conflict in your relationship. And this can show up easily as the early as the, the first Date. So in the single girls kit, you learn the difference between a conscious, a conscious base value and a fear base value. And, and more importantly, how to understand it, understand how these values can help drive you and drive and help make decisions in your life. So that if you're on a date and you know that you value, um, you value, uh, let's see, uh, travel. So I've talked a lot about myself and like, I really value my freedom, traveling, like just quick little getaways. And you're on a date with someone's like, no, <laughs> I've never been outside of the city, New York city. I, I have no intention to like travel. I'm okay with staying in the five boroughs. I'm probably not going to say yes to a second date. <laughs> because that doesn't necessarily align with what I want to do, where I see myself. What do you think? Yeah, I think that's powerful. And I do think it's really, it is being very clear about what you value, where you're not willing to bend. And I, I'll give an example. Mm -hmm. Let's just say you live near members of your family. Maybe, mm -hmm. maybe you live close to your mom or your parents. And that is where you intend to stay. And let's just say you're doing some online dating and I've never been on an online dating app or website, but I'm sure that you can choose a, an area, okay? A, 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 a area of how far out you're looking to maybe match with someone. I mean, you can probably set it up where you can, you're, not on a, you're not matching someone in another state if you didn't want to. So, so a certain area, okay? 
you get a match and you already know I'm not willing to bend on, on moving and relocating. So let's say you meet someone, but he lives an hour away. Well, if me staying where I lo am located now is not up for negotiation on that first date, because this is a non-negotiable, this is going to be a probing question that I'm going to bring up. Now, it's being tactful. You don't just come out and say to him, would you be willing to relocate? <laughs> okay, you're, you're <laughs> going to say, check please, and it would make sense. But again, you want to ask questions about him to get to know him, but those questions need to be questions that are going to give you information about where you're willing to bend okay, your green flag, and where you're not, your red flag. So if you asked him, so you live in da 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 is that close to your work, your family, you know, you're an hour from here, thank you for meeting with me, whatever. And he says, yeah, I work there. And I, my family is there as well. Oh, okay. You may expand off of that to kind of get a feel for, does he sound like he would be open to relocating because maybe an hour, maybe there's a long commute to even go an hour. It could be three hours, depending on where you're at. That may be a red flag for you. I'm not saying it's a deal breaker. You have to, you have to identify what's a deal breaker. If, if smoking is a deal breaker for me and I'm meeting someone and he says, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to run outside real quick and have a smoke gu guaranteed. It ends right there. Now I don't have to, I probably wouldn't, well, I may, I may just, I may at the end of the, I don't know. I mean, it's okay. Someone could judge me for that. Go for it. More power to you because that shows you have work to do because we all get to choose what is our negotiable and non-negotiable. Mm -hmm. That may be a non-negotiable for me and I get to choose that. Okay. We get to choose where we place our value and our standards I mean, if I had to be out on the dating scene now at my age at 50, oh, believe me, what I was looking at at 25 and what I'm looking at at 50 are very different. And relationships teach you that. So look at the pattern of the people you've dated. Mm -hmm. What takeaways do you have that you say, no, no, nope, nope. Okay, if you're dating that again, you have no one to blame but yourself. If, if, if he drank too much and then you dated another guy and he drank too much and then you dated another guy and he drank too much, well, guess who has to do the work? Not the guys, you do. Yeah. Yes, yes. I, I, would, I would question what, <laughs> I, I would, what, what are you, why, why are you ignoring this? <laughs> Uh, you know, come up in the, in the single girls kit because <laughs> yes. of it is you know, Marie will help you find things you have to peel back. Yes. The beauty of coaching. Yes. Yes. Oh, what you can't pull out. Right. Right. It's about doing things differently. Right. Like you said, Tracy, if you're dating the same type of type of man, but you know, in different clothes, he, he has a different name. <laughs> I want to look, I'm, we're going to explore more of that. We're going to explore more of that. I know for me in my twenties, I was dating a lot of guys that were just very unavailable, whether they were long distance and like twice my age. Like I was choosing just guys that if you had an opposite, like the complete opposite of what was traditional, I was, I was into that. I was into it because of my own, my own gremlin, my own fear of, of intimacy. And so it took, it took coaching for me to get out of that pattern, to get out of that, that, that cycle and to own up to it. So in the singer girls case, yes, I'm going to ask you these questions. I'm going to ask you, what have you noticed? What have you noticed about the men that you have dated? Because they all can't be narcissists. They all can't be like, <laughs> like emotionally unavailable, right? Or maybe they are. But what, what, is, what, 
what does that say about you? How are you, how much are you available? How much are you hiding? Hiding behind your gremlin. All of it, a lot of it comes back to your gremlin. So that's why we devote two weeks on the gremlins. It gets heavy, but it's, it's, it's much, once you get it out and you're around me, the other ladies, you got this. Um, so let's discuss uh, some, some green flags, some more negotiables. Obviously this could look different for everyone, but this is just a universal. So they honor your, your boundaries. So first, so first of all, you must know what your boundaries, <laughs> what your boundaries are. So we talk about that in week two um, and how to communicate that in a high value way. And that's something that you were talking about, Tracy, how to communicate that, because I think that is the difference between the difference that makes you, you know, a high caliber woman is the way that you communicate your boundaries, your wants, and your needs. A lot of it, it starts with a lot of I statements. And we talk about this in a singer girl's kit. I statements. If you find yourself saying, you, <laughs> you do this and you do that, guess what? what? What is that saying? There's like three fingers pointing back to you, two fingers pointing back at you. That's all it is. That's not communicating in a high value way. Communicating in a, your boundaries in a high value way looks like, um, you know, I, I am, you know, I'm looking for a, I'm looking for, a, you know, a serious relationship and I, I'm not interested in, in sleeping with you. Have a good night. <laughs> Not quite like that, but that's how you would, you would state it. You would say it in a, I, uh, you would start with saying that's, that's your boundary. I need this. I need the emotional connection in order for me to get there. What do you think? Yeah. What, and I think it's all your approach. I mean, you wouldn't be out on a first, second or third day and, and possibly say, I'm I'm interested in this. I'm not going to sleep with you. It's more like sharing with, with the person that, you know, it's really important to me to really know that we have a connection and co we're committed. I mean, yeah. I want to spend this time getting to know you. And I just want to be clear that I'm not looking for physical connection until I know that we're a connection and we're in a committed relationship. That's mm -hmm. a value of mine. And you know, either you can respect it or you can't. The other thing too, and I've, I've observed this in my one-on-one -on -one coaching with clients that have dated and, and I've worked more with women my age. So they're on the, the second time around, they are divorced or widowed. You know, I, I hear a lot of, you know, all he wants to do is have sex. Well, and not even necessarily the first date. We're talking, you know, maybe the second or third, but he could go in for a kiss or something on the first date. Here's my whole thing with that. Number one, if you haven't somehow set the tone that you're not open to being physical that soon, then what do you need to do? What's the message for you to convey to him that I'm not, because our body language can share that as well, okay? What we're doing with our body language could show that we're eager and we're willing, or we're a little bit more not quite there yet. So watch your own cues but you can't hold it against a person because they're attracted to you and they may have a desire to be intimate with you. That, is that really a negative that he's a true? No, but I hear this over and over and where it comes from is the drama of dating. So here's, I wanna to go to another place real quick. How much of your scars and wounds from your, your dating drama, are you carrying around with you on all these dates? Because it's showing up. Mm -hmm. It's showing up. You're oozing it all over you. And he may be doing the same. Makes sense you wouldn't have a connection considering you're already on the defense when you show up for a date because you already have him guilty. And now he has to prove himself innocent and he hasn't done anything. So watch that. If you're carrying a lot of scars and wounds around, 
Lena Marie is going to cover that because that's holding you back. Hello, gremlin. Hello, fear. Right. Mm -hmm. But don't be careful how much you're already. He, this, he, that, he, he, like Lena Marie said, you, you, you. Is it really a bad thing that he's attracted to me and kind of wants to be into? I find that quite flattering. It doesn't mean I need to give in. Is he respecting my boundaries when I share with him somehow, some way, body language as well, that I'm not open to that at this stage? If he respects that, but is still attracted to me and maybe looks forward to that, great. I may look forward to it too. Who's to say I don't want it? It doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to go after it. Bam. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. Um, so another green flag would be he's willing to have a tough conversation with you. He doesn't run away. He's emotionally mature. Um, that's important. That That is, if you find someone that's willing to have these tough conversations about about sex and, and, and uh, uh, the past, whatever it is, that's a green flag. That's a green flag. What do you think, Tracy? Oh, sorry, I'm muting. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think that you can pick up a lot about a person just in their communication. Mm -hmm. um, some, again, some, it depends on where you're at in the dating scene. If you're further down the road and you, you have a concern, let's say he's got a decent job, making pretty good money, has a little bit of debt, not uncommon for, for young, young adults, but he's, he's helping his mom financially and his dad and his brother mm -hmm. and his brother's not even working. Okay. And so he's financially helping these people and that doesn't align with your beliefs and values. So you want to discuss this because this is a concern and you better believe it's a big one. So there's, there's, there's little things like he drips the coffee by the coffee pot every day. Okay. Pet peeve, right? Um, when he rinses the dishes to put them in the dishwasher, he leaves the sink messy. Pet peeve, right? These aren't big deals. These aren't big non-negotiables. Yes, you could address them with someone, but those aren't typically a deal breaker. Mm -hmm. But if you approach him and he's willing to hear you and respects you, to hear your voice, to try to come to a common ground, to say, it makes sense that you're uncomfortable with me giving my family money, considering they're all kind of freewheeling off me. It makes sense you'd feel that way. That'd be, that's, that's a green flag. That's a good thing. You're, he's workable. That means when you have hurdles and roadblocks and you will, he's willing to work with you. He's showing that he can resolve conflict with you. A lot of people don't think about the person I'm dating. Does he seem like he could resolve conflict with me? Cause we're going to have it. We're going to have conflict. So that's the stuff you want to look for. If you can tell he's detached, I mean, to some degree, many people are non-confrontational, right? Because it's uncomfortable. We don't like that feeling of confrontation. But there are certain topics that need to be brought up and we need to have the space to be able to share when we have a concern in a relationship. And if you can tell he's shut down or if you're shut down, could be a big problem, could be a big barrier. Yes. Yes, yes, exactly. And, and in week one, we do a whole exercise on your ideal partner. And um, I won't share too much on the exercise, but we, we work on it together in the group. And one of, one of the, one of the one, like important things for me is someone who takes accountable, who's, who, who, who keeps accountable, who is who owns up, who takes responsibility for himself. And so that's what you were just, just describing, Tracy, that, that I wouldn't have recognized that probably a couple of years ago or, or maybe when I was 25, probably wouldn't recognize that he's trying to work with me because of my own blocks. But now I instantly recognize it. 
instantly recognize it because I've worked on that myself. I've worked on taking accountability. Uh, I've worked on what I want in someone. I've worked on it myself. Yeah. Yep, and, and so my next green flag would be consistency. Mm-hmm. He, he's consistent. His actions matches his words. If he says he's going to call you after work, he does it. Okay. If he sets up a date for Friday night, he follows through. And if he has to cancel it, he lets you know, he doesn't just leave you hanging. And, and then, and then he follows up and he reschedules, he reschedules. When people show you who they are, believe them. Yes. So if he's showing you that, believe him. But if he's showing you the opposite, believe him. Believe it. The actions. Mm-hmm. And you can find that out in the first three dates. Mm-hmm. Now, a lot of my clients, a lot of people in the singer girls kit is like, um, they might get in their head about like texting. And, and we go over this in week six. I made this the last one because... Uh, there's there's a lot of meaty other things that we we work on but i I, what i've heard with texting like he's not texting me frequently throughout like between each date and I'm, i'm gonna tell you guys right now i'm not a huge like fan of texting a lot in between dates check ins that's nice good morning text messages I, I really don't care, all right? What I do care is our in-person dates. I'm looking out if he is asking me out, if, if he's showing up to the date, if he's confirming the date, whether or not he's texting me in between and we're having all this banter back and forth. And it's, it, that, might, that might feel nice in the moment, but you wanna have these conversations in person, not necessarily in text message. So I also wanted to make some people aware of that. That that doesn't mean, that doesn't necessarily mean he's not interested. It just means just wait for the date and you see him in person. Yeah. And I can see both sides. And the other thing I see Mm -hmm. with that as well is if he is texting though in between dates consistently, and then all of a sudden he doesn't. Yes. Okay, yes. that's now, that's a red flag. Now, many women probably tiptoe around that because of the confidence factor. No, you don't tip, tiptoe around. You just say, hey, listen, I haven't heard from you this week. Everything going okay. See what he comes back with. But too many women tiptoe around. He isn't texting. He's ghosting. Da, 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 da. Well, what are you doing sitting around doing nothing? <laughs> You're crying and whining and do something. But that's a confidence thing. So identify, check yourself on your confidence. Yes, your confidence and then the story, the mm-hmm. story, your interpretations and your assumptions. Um, we work on this in weeks two, three, and four. What are you telling yourself when he's not texting you? Like he didn't text you within 10 minutes. What are you creating in your head? He's not, he, he's not interested in me. Like, <laughs> like okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're like telling all your friends like look see he has it like, i haven't heard from him like 12 hours <laughs> and we want to coach why that's so important yes. Yes, we would be coaching why is it so important that he's texting back in 10 minutes what's cool why yeah. do you do that so much so that's not even about dating that's a personal gale it's a, that's a, that's going something going on inside. Mm-hmm. Exactly. That's why the stigma girls kit is yeah. unlike any other program. It's not your average dating program because that's what we are focusing on. Everyone wants to skip to week, you know, six, <laughs> like, well, let's talk about dating apps and stuff. No, a yeah. lot of this comes back to our own selves, like our own limiting beliefs, our own stories that we're creating in our heads our own assumptions that just because it happened in, in the past, it's going to happen, uh, happen today. And then our gremlin. Okay. That's the most personal inner block. It's the most powerful block. And so that's why 
I've designed the program the way that it is so that we can tackle that first, All right? And then in between, yes, we get clear on your standards, what they are and why you want it. That's also important, the why. Why do you, why do you need this, okay? Maybe it was important for you at age 25, at age 30, but at 35, maybe not so much. So why do you want it? We talk about your, your ideal partner. How much are you bringing that to the table? How are, how are you being, right? And then we work on believing. Believing it's only a matter of time when you meet him. It's not an if. You're living in a state of if it happens, you're still, you're operating from uh, your fear, your gremlin, from scarcity. If you don't believe that you are truly deserving of what you want, you are literally telling the universe not to bring it, not to bring it to you, literally. So we work on that. We work on believing that you deserve it because you do. And if you're clear on these things, I guarantee you that the relationship you want, the right person that you want will naturally fall into place. It's not like luck, okay? That person over there is not luckier than you, okay? It's about doing the work and having the support of me and the other ladies in the program and having a plan also, having a plan in place because that's where a lot of people uh, mess up on, the plan. <laughs> a plan in place so that people can actually find you. Do we have any questions? Or comments? Second. I just checked and I didn't see anything right now, but um, I do, we have about five minutes left because I do have to jump off at seven, but before we, and maybe a couple of questions will come in, Lena Marie, why don't you once again share just the details of the single girls kit, the Wine Wednesday exclusives, when those expire so that people know where they can get to the link is the link in the description box. They can go to the website. You want to go over all of that? Yes. Yes. Okay. So once again, the Wine Wednesday exclusive. So in addition to the single girls kit group program, which is the six weeks that you have with me and the other ladies and the classes, you will also get a post pro program. So after the six weeks, we work on one-on-one, -on -one, a private dating profile, consultation and a coaching session and then wine wednesday exclusive number two is you could possibly win an eli so you'll be entered in a drawing so one person this is my gift to them one person okay it's 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 random <laughs> we'll get the free eli okay um, and then you get to schedule your, your debrief and uh, your, your assessment and your debrief. And that's two hours long. So you will get all of this. So the six weeks, um, the, the, um, the coaching session, session, and then the one person will get the ELI assessment. And you get all of this as long as you sign up by Friday, at midnight. So you have approximately 40 hours from now. So it's Wednesday. So you have about two days in order to qualify for this. Okay. The single girls kit is 427, uh, 427. And it's, yes, it can be split into payments six weeks, every Saturday, 12 PM Eastern, 11 AM central time. Um, and, uh, and, and did I forget anything else? I think you covered it. And then just know you can go to the Hensel Coaching and Consulting website. There's a single girls kit page there. There will also be a link um, inserted in the description box below. It's, you can get to it on the Hensel Coaching and Consulting Instagram page, as well as the Tracy Hensel Instagram page as well. So there's, there's never a reason not to find information and the link to register. Um, like Lena Marie said earlier, you know, the dating world, if you're, if you're not having success with it, you know, it starts with a plan, you know, what is your plan? And a lot of times people don't, 
they don't, they don't think about that. They just, again, they go in kind of blind. I want you to look at this and, and you, and, and you're going to go over this in one of the weeks. And that's why I want, this is my favorite week, because I think this is the missing link for a lot of people. You're going to, you're going to cover all of the gales, the blacks. This is your gremlin, your assumptions, your interpretations, your limited beliefs, you're gonna cover all of that. And you're gonna use those tools in every area of your life in all relationships, not just dating. That's the beauty of this. But think of dating similar to a job. Your mm -hmm. resume, you put a lot of time into that. And you're telling in your resume, your story, a, a lot about you. Is your profile, if you're on a dating app, sharing enough about you to weed people out? So I always use the analogy, if you were searching for a job and you were on a site, a LinkedIn, whatever, and you're looking for a job, if you see something that you're not qualified for, you're probably going to say, mm, that sounds great, but they have three different things that I don't, I don't qualify for. So you may or may not apply for that job. We would talk about that in coaching. Lena Marie would share with that because that's, that's a job thing, but it's similar. Your profile needs to be set up where when people see it, they may say, mm, I'm not even going to connect, try to connect or whatever it is what they do with this person because I can already tell their standards are higher. So if you find yourself dating a lot of what you would call fails, again, it goes back to, well, what are you putting out there? Mm -hmm. And a lot of times people don't want to put out there. They don't want to be too hard up front because they don't want to sound shallow. Be, I don't care. Be that way. Whatever it is, be very clear. And I know you're limited on that, but you can weed out a lot just by how you word your profile. And that is one of the things you guys will be going over in the single girls kit. And to me, that's really planting the seed. And that's a powerful, powerful week right there. Right, exactly. Um, you know, I shared a lot about myself today and in, in a couple of videos on Tracy's YouTube, you can look back on it, but um one of my, one of my biggest fears and what I, I found myself like missing in my dating profile when I first got back on a dating profile, like dating scene a couple of years ago, um, was I was just afraid of starting over. I was afraid of starting over. And I, and I definitely was kind of, was not completely putting myself out there. So, and being very clear on what I, I wanted and what I needed. And so that's why I think it's really important to, to do that and to be very clear on your dating, on your dating profile and, and, and say it, speak from, speak from the heart, not, not, not up here, but from the heart and be true to yourself. All right. So I'm good here. We have any, anything else? No. So thank you everyone once again for taking time this evening to join us. It could be afternoon for some people, Pacific time zone it would be, but we thank you for being here. This will stay on my YouTube channel if you'd like to reference back to it. Don't forget to check out the Single Girls Kit page on the website. Uh, get registered for this beautiful opportunity. Whenever you can do a six, six week group coaching session, you save a lot of money that way. Uh, which is different than one-on-one -on -one coaching. So it's a great opportunity. And again, I can't stress enough that the tools that you'll walk away with from this six week program can be applied to so many other areas of your life, especially the blocks, because they show up, they show up everywhere. So exactly, exactly. Thank you, Lena Marie exactly. for, for joining, joining us here tonight on YouTube. We really appreciate it. And we look forward to the single girls kit starting this weekend. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Take care. All right. Bye everyone.